School of Music, welcome to Fall 2020, and welcome back to those who are returning. I'm Dr. Diane Reich, Director of the School of Music. We are so happy to reconvene on campus for as long as possible. Seeing even half of your faces is better than none. I want to express gratitude and appreciation to the School of Music task forces who have spent hours preparing for a safe return. We have studied the studies, viewed the webinars, read all the science so we can get our hands on, and has been all consuming to find ways to preserve safety for students, faculty, and staff, and to provide resources for students to continue to progress and grow. Please observe all the protocols and precautions both on and off campus to protect yourselves, each other, and our ability to stay on campus. I want to reiterate our initiative coined by Professor Corey Katsianis, don't be the one. Don't be the one who ignores policies and protocols put in place for safety. Don't be the one who doesn't wear a mask. Don't be the one who spreads the virus or is inconsiderate of others. Don't be the one. In a normal semester, right now we would be gathered in the Dion Concert Hall enjoying company, making announcements, and reveling in the excellence of faculty performances, and receiving School of Music swag. All of that will be included here with additional links below to see what your faculty have been up to during COVID. I want to express an especial appreciation to Dr. Kurt Seville for his five years of excellent service as the director of the School of Music. Make sure that if you see him in the hall, you give him a shout or an elbow bump. Now for exciting news. If you've walked past the law school or the creamery, you have seen big holes in the ground and big piles of dirt. Well, those are our holes and piles of dirt. Thanks to the Herculean effort of Dr. Seville and also Dean Ed Adams and Associate Deans, Jeremy Grimshaw, Rory Scanlon, and Amy Jensen for endless hours in meetings, this is a reality. Give them an elbow bump too. You can check progress on the building from the College of Fine Arts and Communications website, cfac.byu.edu. Click on the screen with the picture of the construction and it will take you to a 24 seven webcam. Just to show you what you might be looking at, there are walls going up around the large ensemble room. And we have some foundations and potential floating floors for the percussion suite. So as you watch that camera, you can see what's taking shape. The Student Advisory Committee, or SAC, is a committee that is there for you. It's the liaison between the students and the faculty, headed by faculty advisor, Dan Bryce. And now a message from our SAC president, Courtney Lawson. Hello, School of Music students. My name is Courtney Lawson, and I am the School of Music Student Advisory Council president for 2020 to 2021. I wanted to make a video to introduce myself, introduce the advisory council, and tell you a little bit about what we do and how we represent you as students. So for the Student Advisory Council, we have area representatives and we try and cover as many bases as possible, trying to represent as many students as possible. So in the vocal area, we have two representatives. We have myself, I'm a vocal performance major and I'm also president. We have Emily Steele, who is also a vocal performance major and she helps with our social media page. We have Hannah Sabrowski-Tavener. 
She is a piano performance major representing the piano area. She usually would be helping with concerts at noon as well, but unfortunately we can't have those right now, but we are actively working on brainstorming new performance ideas and opportunities for students because we definitely see a need for that and understand that there are still recitals and auditions that people have to deal with right now. We have two brass area representatives this year. We have Brandon Chamberlain, who is trumpet performance, and he also helps with social media. And we have Ashley Rands, who is a trombone performance major. We have two music education representatives. We have Taylor Rain, who is a choral ed area representative and a choral ed major. And then we have Kayla Farnsworth, who is instrumental ed major representing the instrumental ed area. We have two woodwinds representatives. We have Bren Parker, who is a flute performance major. And then we have Emily burden Rees, who is also a flute performance major, but will be representing students who are doing classes entirely online. We understand that some people have stayed at home to stay safe during the pandemic. And we understand that the experience with having all classes online versus one or two on campus is a little bit different. We wanna make sure that your concerns and your questions are answered and that your needs are met. We have CJ Madsen, who is a choral conducting master's student, and he will be representing the graduate students. He also usually would be helping with concerts at noon, but like I said, we're working on a replacement right now for that. We have two strings representatives. We have Bailey Jorgensen, who is a harp performance major, and we have Maddie Wild, who is a violin performance major, and she helps with our social media page as well. And lastly, we have Kayla Broton, who is a commercial music major representing the commercial music area. And he also helps with our social media page. For social, social media, we have an Instagram that we use primarily. And that Instagram is at BYU Music Sac. We would encourage you to follow it, not only for information, but just so you can feel more like you're a part of this School of Music community. Things that we post on there, we have Music Meme Monday where people can submit and share memes through the Instagram story. We have student spotlights. We've done this in the past, but this year we want to amp it up a bit because we know that meeting new people and surrounding yourself with musicians is a little bit difficult since we don't have classes online and we don't have this lab to really socialize at anymore. And so we want to be able to still have a musician community supporting each other. So we're going to spotlight and feature more students so that you can see what your peers are working on and learn to support each other virtually. We also post general information about upcoming events or things that people need to know um, that you may be receiving through emails, but it's nice to receive that in lots of different places. And like I said previously, we are working on coming up with ideas of new performance opportunities and new ways to connect as a school of music. And those types of things will be posted on there as well. We would hope that if you see any of us in the School of Music or online on our personal social media or through the SAC social media that you would reach out and say hi. Tell us about yourself. We'd love to meet you. We'd love to hear your questions, answer them if we can, address concerns. We really are the voice for the students. We take all concerns um, that need to be fixed to the executive board of the School of Music and we make sure that those concerns are addressed and that if we can find a solution, we do. We're also working on collaborating more with, the, with BYUSA to make sure that our voices are not only heard within the School of Music, but that they're heard as part of the BYU campus as well. We are also working on coming up with new replacement activities and performance opportunities and way to unite us more. Good luck with your school year, everyone. Thank you, Courtney. We appreciate all that the SAC does for the School of Music. This year's School of Music swag will be custom-made School of Music face masks. And we will have one for every student, faculty, and staff in the School of Music. Those should be in the building this week, and so we will send out information about how you can get a hold of your face mask. 
There is a lot of information, including School of Music policies, procedures, protocols, uh, on our School of Music COVID webpage, including the office hours when you can pick up your mask. Uh, accessible via music.byu.edu. Check it regularly because we will put updates on this website as conditions change. Just last week when President Worthen gave his annual address to the university, he talked about the need to act while being acted upon. The idea that even though there are some elements that act upon us, we can continue to act and move forward because of the atonement of Jesus Christ. He also said in the same address, if we emerge from the pandemic unscathed but unchanged, we will have missed out on the full benefit of this unique experience. I've been thinking a lot about how I will allow myself to be changed by this. I've also been thinking about the word forth. The scriptures talk a lot about going forth. In 2 Nephi, there's a prophecy about the word of God going forth. But a seer will I raise up, and unto him will I give power to bring forth my word unto the seed of thy loins, and not to the bringing forth my word only, saith the Lord, but to the convincing them of my word, which shall have already gone forth among them. Because of their faith, their word shall proceed forth out of my mouth unto their brethren, and the weakness of their words will I make strong in their faith, unto the remembering of my covenant which I made unto thy fathers." and in Doctrine and Covenants. And also many whom I have called and sent forth to build up my church. Our BYU motto is, enter to learn, go forth to serve. There is power in the very act of going forth. So what does forth mean? It's an adverb, it means out from a starting point and forward or into view. So often going forth refers to the unknown or a possibly dangerous situation. Noah sent forth a raven which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. And he also sent forth a dove to him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. In the Book of Mormon, Hagoth the explorer, he being an exceedingly curious man, therefore he went forth and built him an exceedingly large ship on the borders of the land bountiful by the land desolation, and launched it forth into the West Sea by the narrow neck which led into the land northward. Many of you have experienced what Doctrine and Covenants section 133 verse 8 describes, send forth the elders and sisters of my church unto the nations which are afar off, unto the islands of the sea, send forth unto foreign lands, call upon all nations, first upon the Gentiles and then upon the Jews. Going forth is not necessarily pleasant, perhaps not even a preferred course of action, and can even be fraught with peril but it is a necessary course in order to go forward or into view. One thing I have learned during this time is that, that I need to change is that I must make more time out with my family. In all the years that I have been here, I have never taken a trip to explore Southern Utah with my family. Determined to make it so this year, my husband and I went forth on a weekend trip to camp and hike. I had never been in a slot canyon and I was excited to hike into one. The slot canyons my husband was familiar with were inaccessible, so he researched one that would be a short hike and could be walked into as opposed to climbing down. Now, I had been exercising and running consistently, so I was not concerned about a five mile round trip hike. As an additional incentive, this hike was along the road to Hole in the Rock, a treacherous pass that our pioneer ancestors dangerously traversed with wagons when settling in southern Utah, and I wanted to gain added appreciation for my pioneer heritage. We had prepared in all the ways. 
water, snacks, hats, sunglasses, walking sticks, and sunscreen. We started out wearing Chacos since many slot canyons have water, but a hiker who had just finished the hike advised that we needed better shoes. We had also prepared for this. So we took his advice and we changed our shoes. As we began the trek along the desert sand trail, I was awed by the scenery. It was incredible. I noticed single flowers that glue, grew along the trail. I lightheartedly said, this is a metaphor for COVID, blooming alone under harsh conditions. My husband then noticed certain flowers that had sprung up next to a hardier plant and were able to grow taller and fuller due to the strength and shade of the stronger plant. Together and connected make a difference. This analogy was coming together nicely. Before long, my skin was starting to feel the effects of noonday heat. I was afraid my sun skin wasn't working on my fair and delightsome skin. I use that Book of Mormon quote to describe my paleness. I tried to protect my arms in the shade of my hat. When it was possible, my good husband Steve would walk next to me and give me a bit of shade, just like those pairs of plants we had seen. You see, there was no shade in the desert afternoon sun. Not even sagebrush would grow out there. Since it had not yet been too terribly hot up here in Utah Valley, we were unsuspecting of the heat in the south and did not get on the trail very early. Still, it was not a long hike. We continued to trudge with the sand filling my shoes and finally, finally came to Zebra Slot Canyon where we expected beauty, shade, and relief. Here, we met with two misfortunes. One, the canyon walls were not tall enough to provide any shade. Two, the canyon was so narrow that one could not walk through it or carry a pack, so, but had to climb the walls. So here I was, finally to the goal, and I had not the strength or the heavy duty footwear to go inside. At this point, I was happy to huddle in a tiny little patch of shade with the backpack and let Steve work his way inside. It was a really cool slot canyon. <laughs> I could tell from the photos. Now commenced the return. Under the 100 degree sun, I was sure my arms were blistering and I plodded from small patch of shade to small patch of shade to find any relief I could. I began to feel chills up my spine, though there was no breeze on my sweat, and I thought, this is not good. My breathing became more labored, and when we stopped for water, I could not catch my breath for more than just a sip. I began to curse this COVID analogy and those brave little flowers blooming alone in the desert. I just wanted to curl up under the juniper bush and let it all go away. I knew Steve couldn't carry me out, I knew I had to finish, and yet I did not know how I could go forth. This mental torment was new for me. I have been discouraged, distraught, and even depressed. But in this case, the logical voice in my head could not speak up against this complete despair. Even when I could see the parking lot ahead, I did not know how I could make it. Once Steve saw the car, he went on ahead to get the AC going. And when I collapsed in the car, he plied me with drinks and cooling wipes for my skin. I was not blistered or even sunburned, by the way. The searing heat just felt that way. Once I was home and could look up the, look up the symptoms of heat stroke, then I understood what I had experienced. More important than the physical suffering of that afternoon was the mental anguish I had felt. I gained a sincere empathy for those who have felt they could no longer go forth in this challenging time, who only want to shut down and wait out the pandemic. I'm deeply sorry for those struggling and feeling despair. I want to testify that just as the atonement of Christ allows us to act when being acted upon, 
Our Savior and our loving Heavenly Father are the one source who can help us to continue to go forth when it seems impossible. We were not sent at this time to curl up under the juniper bush, but to complete or continue through challenges that seem daunting and frightening, to connect with those around us and go forth into view. Counsel from others, such as our prophets and scientists and doctors, can help us to outfit ourselves, both physically and spiritually, with the proper footwear to go forth more safely and effectively. As we now embark on a semester that is unfamiliar in so many ways, may we look to the trusted guidance of our Heavenly Father through prayer, scriptures, and our living prophet. Connect with each other for strength. Be faithful, be flexible, and go forth. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. And now, a special message from the School of Music Executive Council. So you live real long. Put that mask on your face and keep it in place. Wear it every day all over your face. We will, we will rock you. Everybody sing along. We will, we will rock you. The HVAC building has been our house, but we're digging a big hole real sneaky like a mouse. Watching it grow be sorta of like a race And soon we'll all say this is our place Sing and we will, we will rock you uh -huh. Sing it! We will, we will rock you Everybody, ah, ah. Now my friends, as forth we go With our eyes to the Father to help us grow We work and we pray So faithfully with Him we can discover Just who we can be we will, we will rock you. Sing it. We will. 